people in the UK live with dyslexia, and one of those is former Health Secretary Matt Hancock. The other one is Holly Willoughby. Mm -hmm. uh, Matt says it's almost cost him his career. Well, in a new bid which he will be putting to Parliament later today, Mr Hancock is calling for more support for primary school children with dyslexia, and he joins us now to tell us more. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to see you. So, I mean, this is... Obviously, I'm dyslexic, exactly what you're describing here. I was a child who was at school. I got diagnosed just before my GCSEs, which was brilliant and it helped me then. I do wonder if I'd had an earlier diagnosis that I might have had my learning tailored that might have helped me because later on, once I knew, there was things put in place and brilliant learning support that made a huge difference to me. And I think that's probably why I'm OK reading the autocue and I yeah. have this job that I do now. And this is precisely what your bill is trying to achieve, isn't it? That's right. It's... A shocking fact that estimates are that only about a fifth of children get identified if they're dyslexic yeah. at school and I want to change that and I want to have screening for all pupils at primary school and then the support and the teaching to help them because mm. once you're identified just as you were saying about you and the same happened to me I was identified at university and um, then you can work out how to cope with it in my case I was re-taught how to read and write. Yeah. And, and I now... I was taught to see words as pictures and learn each word as a picture. And, and, and that's what got me through. Because I think this is really, really key, because I think there is a lot of um, embarrassment around dyslexia. There's yeah. a lot of shame sometimes around dyslexia. And most of that is born out of the fact that people feel stupid or they feel they weren't the bright one at school because other people seem to be achieving things that they're just, they just can't. So yeah. they're the different one. And actually, what I've learned to realise is, is that it's a different way. You need to find the key that unlocks your way of learning, right? Yeah. So that you can keep up with everybody else. It's yeah. almost like a tailored way of learning. Well, our, our brains just work differently. We think different if you're dyslexic. But Which you're... is an asset a lot of times, Yes, by the and, way. And, and dyslexic people tend to be more creative, uh, better at visualisation. So there's the, actually the things that the modern jobs need more and more of, mm. uh, dyslexics tend to be well, good at. Ten, but 10% only... of the country are dyslexic. 40% of successful entrepreneurs yeah. are dyslexic. Yeah, and there are some really amazing examples. And I think I also want through this to encourage people who are dyslexic and then have been uh, successful to talk about it. You know, mm. I, I admire the fact that you talk about it because... It... I'm really proud of being dyslexic. Actually, that was one of my favourite things about me because I think it brings, like, a unique skill set. I really do. And it, I've always felt like that. My mum used to say to me, God, you're sending that Christmas card, it's all spelt wrong, you can't send it out. And I'd be like, to be honest, mum, it's the, what's the, commun it's the communication, it's what I'm trying to say. That's the important thing, not how it's all spelt. So I've always been quite proud of it, in a well, way. Uh, that, that's wonderful. It's, uh, and it's great that you're talking about it, but not everybody does. Yeah. You know, I, I went... After the university, I went for 20 years before talking about it, yeah. and I was explaining to uh, one of my civil servants when I, was, when I was in the Cabinet, I said, one of the things you've got to do is write short notes on top of the long documents, because I will read the long documents, but I need to choose which ones I need to read, because mm -hmm. I read slowly. He said, why? I said, look, I don't tell anybody, but I'm dyslexic. Oh. He said... I'm dyslexic. You've got to get out there and tell people because yeah. then you can, you know, you and, and people like you, Holly, can show that just because you're dyslexic well, doesn't mean that you can't get to the were top Were you table. embarrassed? I was, I was worried. I was really worried how people would react. I thought, I thought it would hold me back. It nearly lost you your job. Well, it, early in my career it did. I, I had this... I was working for, a, I was working for an MP um, who was trying to get elected, re-elected, and I accidentally wrote on a leaflet, he wanted to say, I want to unite the community. And I wrote, I want to untie the community. Oh, no. And it was only after this leaflet had gone to 40,000 homes that we Pretty spotted nice. it. It was awful. And, you know, he, he lost his seat. He lost his career. I mean, he's forgiven me, I hope, since. Um, but it, it was an awful, awful moment. And I didn't talk about it from then on. I mean, thankfully, things... Mind you, there should have been someone else to check it. Well, you, yeah, but, you know, sometimes it doesn't happen. Well, it obviously didn't in this case. And, and you know, the, technology helps. Yeah. Microsoft invented, you know, the red squiggly line, uh, the, the, the spell checker, mm. which helps a lot. Mm. Um, but it made me really, really worried about talking about it until, until much, much later. And the reaction when you did finally talk about it, how was it, it received? It was wonderful. Yeah. It was wonderful. I got so many people, especially people who... Are both are dyslexic and talk about it, but also people who aren't and people whose children are dyslexic. Mm. 
And so I wanted to do something about this in government, and now that I'm on the back benches, I'm absolutely determined to, to make the changes that we need to see. I mean, I when, I, when I came out as dyslexic, there's another famous politician dyslexic, Michael Heseltine, mm. and he texted me. Uh, I didn't have his number. It was uh, to say um, congratulations on talking about it. And I thought, great, I'll save his number. I, I couldn't work out how to spell yeah. Heseltine. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's just a jumble of letters. It starts it is, with an H and ends with an yeah. E. I'm pretty sure of that. It yeah. is for yes. many, for many parents, many children up and down the land. It, this will be very important. The bill will mean that every child will okay. know if they're dyslexic before they leave primary school, so they can be taught according to how their mind works. Was it your dyslexia that meant you misread the social distancing rules? No, I can't blame that on dyslexia or anything else. And in fact, you know, I'm not asking for any special favours because I'm dyslexic. You know, mm. um, and uh, I've got in politics. I've got some things to offer. Um, in that case, that was a that was a mistake, and I've apologised for mm -hmm. it. And it was it was a failure of leadership because I came on shows like this and asked people to to do things, and then um, I didn't follow those rules myself. We um, we were at that time. We were sort of all in it together, we were here, you were there, everyone was talking to everybody else, we'd obviously giving you a very hard time about some, what we all consider were, you know, major issues uh, and problems and mistakes and the care homes catastrophe, you know, those sort of things. But we, we so you sort of see these things through, don't you? Do you regret the fact that you're not there when we start to come out at the, at the other end of this? Well, I think that Sajid Javid, who's doing the job now, is doing an excellent job. Better than you? Well, who knows, because there's so many uncertainties and new things hitting us, mm -hmm. like the new Omicron variant, but I think he's doing a great job. Um, but, it, you know, in those jobs, you... Uh, it, the pressures are big, but uh, that's no excuse. It was a failure of leadership on my part, and, uh, and that, I've apologised for that. Do you, do you want to get back in...? Yeah, do you want to get back into it? Well, I'm not in any rush. The thing is, being a, being a backbench MP, you can change things for the better. I, I'd always wanted to make improvements for people who are dyslexic, but I was never in a, in a government to do, position yeah. to do that. So from the back benches, this is the thing I really care about and want to change, and so I can choose my topic, if you like. You know, some people uh, see, you know, uh, see ministerial life as the, uh, the be-all and end-all of politics. I don't mm -hmm. agree, um, and I think it's actually good for our um, debate and our politics that people who have been in the senior jobs, like Theresa May as the former Prime Minister, mm. you know, when she stands up in the House of Commons, people listen to her words because she's, she's been there. Mm. And I think that's a good thing. And Christmas is just around the corner. We're very festive in here. What will you be doing for Christmas? What does that look like for you this year? I'm going to go and see my parents. Yeah. Looking forward to it very much. And... Uh, you done I... your shopping? I'm, I'm halfway through my shopping. Actually, just before coming on, I, uh, I got my dad's present sorted. And I'm going to go straight off after this to the, to the House of Commons to launch the bill. So I'm, I'm sort of halfway through. OK, good. Thank you for coming oh, in today. Thank you. Thank you. Really thank nice you. And I you. think this is brilliant. And, I, yeah, best of luck. I hope that this one gets passed. Thank you. Thanks for your support. Thank, thank, you. thank you. 